Hi and welcome to episode four of In Conversation with my name is Johnny Cooper and I work in the DCU Student Recruitment uh, Department and I'm delighted to say that we will be joined uh, by two student ambassadors and guests over the next 60 minutes or so uh, and I just see a large attendance in the room as well and I see our first guest Laura so just before I get to Laura I just want to say that there is lots of resources online so today over the next 60 minutes or so as I said we'll talk to two very special guests two current students uh, Laura coming up first from international business and then at half four we will be talking to Kate Goodman from aviation management with pilot studies a little bit later on but it's just a part um, or this conversation is just a part of a number of resources that are available so at dcu.ie forward slash um, CAO, you will find lots more po uh, podcasts, blogs, and much more besides. So without further ado, because we only have 30 minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Laura, who I see on my panel here, I'm going to bring Laura into the room and we'll say hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Where in the world are you? I'm currently in Valencia in Spain. <laughs> well, we will certainly talk about why you're in Valencia in a moment and how are you yeah. keeping I'm doing very well. Is it a bit sunny there or is that just a bit of shade? In um, no, it's sunnier than home. So it is definitely and a bit warmer too. <laughs> a bit warmer. I'd say it is a bit warmer. It's not too bad here. Well, in Dublin, it's not too bad, I guess. Um, and you're keeping well? I am, yeah. Good. Well, you're very good for joining us. I know we only have a half an hour and with these things, there's so much to get through. So um, we will try to jump into a bit of everything, a bit of why you're in Valencia, a bit about the course, a bit about coming to DCU, your experiences and anything else. I just want to say, actually, before we get talking, there is a chat function, a Q&A story function on your screen. So for those that are watching, if you think of a question and you have something you want to ask myself or Laura, probably more so, uh, just pop it in there. It'll be an anonymous question. I won't read out your name. So if you think you want to ask something a little bit further, and um, by all means, please use that function. I'll mention that in a few minutes time, just to remind people again. Um, but first, maybe let's go right to the point. Why, what's in Valencia? Um, well, I'm currently doing my final year of uh, international business in Spanish um, with DCU. And I'm supposed to be in uh, doing an Erasmus in Valencia at the moment, but because everything went online, um, I had the opportunity then, I just said, I kind of really want to be in Spain. So, um, I got in a flight with my friend Emer, who's also in my course, and the two of us have moved out here for, um, we've been out here now two weeks and we'll be here until about Christmas time. Wow, well, so, so you just ju jumped on a plane and headed off. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're making the most of it, um, and fair play, and sunny, as you said there. So what's it like over there when, in comparison to home in terms of the current situation? Um, so Valencia's actually got some of the lowest incidence rates in Spain in general. And uh, eight, just like home, like when they had the county level lockdowns, like um, there's certain places in Spain that are worse at the moment. Valencia, um, though, in terms of that is uh, they're not as strict. Um, unlike home, we have to wear masks anytime we leave the apartment. Um, so when you're in the streets, like if you're walking in the park, you are expected to wear a mask and there's heavy fines if you don't obey your orders. So um, that's the only real difference. Uh, other than that, it, it kind of is life as usual. Now, we did have, um, there's a curfew now, so we have to be in, in our apartments from 12 until 6 in the morning. So uh, that's the only real difference, apart from that, having a great time over here. So <laughs> I was going to say, other than that, you're enjoying life. Fair play yeah, to you. definitely. We might, we might rewind back, because there is um, a decent audience watching, listening in, but we might rewind back to where I've started with a few of the other conversations in the previous weeks is, Maybe tell people a little bit about your journey to DCU. So maybe why you chose it, or maybe add some something else on the CEO. And then we might talk a little bit about the course then and what's involved in the course. Um, yeah, so I'm originally from Donegal, uh, obviously the accent, uh, but um, I traveled off from home to DCU in 2017. So when I was in, uh, well, might've been 2016, when I was in sixth year of, uh, uh, when I was in Leaving Cert, I went up to the open day, the November open days in DCU. And uh, I went to the course talks and at that time I was interested in studying primary teaching, but also wanted to look into business and Spanish because I really enjoyed learning, learning a language at um, second level. So I went to the talks and got speaking to some of the lecturers after um, they did the talks and I was really interested more so in business and Spanish at that stage because I heard about like going abroad, living abroad, getting to... Um, attend university and the opportunities to work abroad as well so after speaking to the lecturer 
and telling them my dilemma, I suppose, with didn't know whether to do teaching or business in Spanish. He said to me, um, if you study business in Spanish and you go on and you want to do your master's in teaching, the likelihood of you getting into a master's is very, much higher because you'll have a second language and that'll be very attractive um, in that sense. So that kind of set me off then. And I was like, yeah, business in Spanish is the way to go. So um, I think out of the 10 choices I put in my sale then, five of the, the top five, I'm pretty sure were DCU. Um, I was looking into global business in Spanish and uh, obviously they have the really high points, global business USA and Canada also looked into them. But um, I had international business down as well and ended up getting that uh, as my um, as my choice on CAO day. So looking back on it afterwards, I was really, really happy with the decision. Um, and uh, obviously it got me to where I am today now here in Spain. So, <laughs> And there you are flying off to Spain just to, to take in the sun. I want to actually, <laughs> you reminded me of something there, but I'll first ask about the course. I do want to ask about maybe um, the differences between international and global business in a couple of moments, because some people, as you were, look at both and the mm -hmm. options, as you mentioned there. Um, but let's maybe talk a little bit about international business itself. Um, I, I guess lots of people naturally enough want to know, and, and there's lots of people watching, but and they do the research, what's in the course in terms of modules. So give us a sense of, I guess, year one and, and just a, an overview of year one, kind of right through and what's involved in the course. Um, so the course is basically split into two thirds business modules and one third language modules. So in each semester, you do six modules, um, four of which will be business and, f and two of them are language modules. Um, most of the business modules you'll do will be very similar to the business modules um, to, that they do in the business studies degree. Um, you could be in a lot of the same classes, so big lecture halls of sometimes 400 people um, doing modules like uh, you cover accounting, finance, um, economics, micro and macro, uh, marketing, um, HR, um, what else have we looked into? With international business, you also do um, modules that are very much based on working in an international workplace. So you do global business environment. Um, we did one last year for Mar it was like a branch of marketing. It was consumer behavior. So I really enjoyed that one. And uh, then in final year, you choose one of the five specialisms. Um, so you do two core business modules and then you choose a specialism subject where you do two modules of that for your final year. So you get to choose either finance, you get to choose out of finance, economics, marketing, um, HR and uh, what's the last one? Mm, what's management, management. Management, yeah. Management. yeah. Go on. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And uh, for the language modules, then your first year, um, you can start at beginner le beginners level with languages such as Japanese, um, Spanish, uh, German and um, Chinese. And then you have to have done French for your leave insert if you want to um, do international business and French. And you have to get a H4 in that in order to progress on with that at, um, in university because they only start the French from intermediate level, the rest you can do from beginners. Um, and in terms of language modules, um, you're covering... Um, a lot of uh, technical kind of the technical sides of the language and you do culture modules as well to get to know different things about the country really setting you up for doing your Erasmus in your third year and then last year when I was in second year we did modules um, that uh, were focused on business kind of language that they use because when you do your Erasmus you're expected to do some of your lectures uh, through the host language so um, when I do my Erasmus I'm coming to Valencia I'll be doing most of my lecture, my business lectures through Spanish. Um, so they really set you up to get you at a high, high level. So you're able to um, study through your chosen language then on your Erasmus. So if I could press pause then for me. So you did or came to say open days and you did your research and your, you had your education and maybe a bit of global business. And now you, you landed on international business eventually then you came up into the university. Can we just touch on that for a moment? Because obviously lots of people come and you're from Donegal, lots of people come from, you know, Donegal or all over the country really outside of Dublin. And then you come into say a first year international business class, which is mixed with general business. The class size is quite big. Try to give us a sense or, and maybe you didn't have too much challenges, but a sense of maybe the first couple of weeks and kind of settling in and how the university operates and what you do the first, kind of first few weeks to find and settle into new friends and so on. Yeah, so um, obviously coming from somewhere that was so far away from Dublin and 
Dublin was very far fetched for me as well. It was re- it was really daunting coming to move to a city. Um, DCU I found though was kind of like its own little hub. You didn't need to go into the city centre to get a, a sense of city life. Like um, it really is its own community. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I was lucky enough to live on campus in first year as well, um, which was really handy for me to get to know my way around and like meet people. So I met a lot of people through where I was living. I lived in Larkfield, which is just for first years. And then um, in my first few weeks of college, I got to know a few people on my course, but mainly branched out into clubs and societies. So um, that was a big step for me, putting myself out there. I knew I had to do it because obviously coming, uh, there wasn't a lot of people came from um, my school to uh, to DCU. So I didn't know a lot of people um, in the college before that. So it is a challenge in the first few weeks, I say, to put yourself out there, but it's well worth it in the end. You will find your people. And I ended up finding mine then when I joined societies. Um, I just want to remind people there is a Q&A function on the screen if as we're talking here you want to ask a question please do so it, it will be anonymous um, and I don't have to read out your name but that, that, that um, function is there so if I could then touch on a little bit around because um, I, I will follow up with clubs and societies and student ambassador and outside the classroom now in a couple of minutes as well definitely want to touch on that but some people as I said a few moments ago look at international or global business and I'm not quite sure and obviously there's the slightly higher points with the global in, some, in, in USA and Canada and so on um, differences between the two programs and I know you're not in global but differences between the two programs for what you know yeah so um, a lot of the differences I learned were actually I learned them through friends that I made that were in global business so I think it's really important that people know them now that are looking at the course uh, basically global business um, with the languages you study uh, so with global business you can do global business USA global business Canada um, you can do global business Germany, uh, global business Spain and French or global business France. So um, with USA and Canada, you can actually study um, a language with your degree. So say if I went on to do global business USA or global business Canada, um, they give you the option um, on some of your electives, you get to uh, keep on maybe your Spanish for first and second year before you go away, if that's an option that you'd like to take. Um, but yeah, So global business, you do your first two years in DCU and then you move abroad and complete your final two years of the degree um, in your chosen country. So you could be in America, um, Canada, et cetera. But that's the main difference is it's two years abroad and it's it's known as a dual degree because you get your degree from DCU and then after that you get your degree from your um, other, the other university that you've studied at. It's a great course because there is intra placement um, within it so you do an intra placement when you're in uh in dublin and dcu and then you do an intra placement when you're abroad as well um so coming out of a degree an undergraduate degree with um two degrees essentially and work experience is like it's amazing to try and get into the workplace i just know um i know from hearing about it people that are on that degree just get snapped up straight away as soon as they've graduated they have such good experience, it's such good cultural experience. Some of them will have languages as well as the cultural experience and just like um, living abroad and uh, adapting to a new situation, they're, they are sought after highly, so they are. There's two questions in, and I don't know if you'll be able, but I'll ask them anyways. Thanks for these two questions. But did Laura do Spanish for Leaving Cert and did you find the language difficult um, coming into the, col- the course? Um, Yeah, so I studied uh, Spanish from first year to sixth year of uh, secondary school and um, I I obviously chose then to keep it on because I I really enjoyed studying languages. Um, I have to say uh, something as I I always say this when I'm doing these talks and talking about the course, um, studying language at third level is very different to studying it studying at second level um purely for the fact that when you're in secondary school you could have five spanish classes a week you could be in there um monday to friday for an hour and uh you get your homework then in the evening you go home and you study it um you study it and you write your sentences or whatever it's very different in university you could have one lecture on a monday and you could have one on a thursday and that could be it for the week Uh, there's so much independent study um involved in studying a language at uh, a third level um so that you're expected to do a few hours yourself obviously to try and keep try and keep up the language um so whether that be reading articles in spanish is what what i do is like i read articles in spanish um i'd flick onto an app on my phone and uh, check the check the newspapers um 
even simple stuff like a lot of people change the settings on their phone to their chosen language just to get used to smaller words um and as well as well as that i know a lot of people would maybe watch netflix in their chosen language and put the subtitles on the screen um and part of the reason i kind of moved over here at the moment as well is because i haven't physically spoken Spanish to a lot of people so I wanted to improve that aspect of it and that's really what the Erasmus does it, it sets you up that you're able to f have a full-blown conversation with someone in a whole other language so yeah very different to second there, level, there, second level. I, I, I want to follow up on that kind of how different is college to kind of second level now in a second but I just want to get to two questions quickly and Laura correct me if I'm wrong but a question came in around global business and do you pay the fees, the DCU fees, if you like, or the Irish fees or the international college fees in America? And my, my understanding is you pay the Irish fee, is it? Yeah, so yeah. you pay the DCU fees. The same with international business. If you do the Erasmus, you're paying your DCU fees as well. Yeah. Um, and then another one, uh, and then the last one, thanks, keep these questions coming in, is what placements do we get in DCU and in the other country? You might have some ideas, our friends, um, et cetera. Yeah, so um, I know from friends doing their intro placement last year, uh, the intro office, which is Integrated Workplace, uh, they work alongside the students to help um, place them in a uh, placement in DCU. And I'm not 100% sure about when they go abroad. I think it's uh, if there's uh, help available in the universities, I'm sure they can apply through them. Otherwise, um, it's very easy to connect with people on LinkedIn. Um, there's always internships up online. So uh, getting an internship usually usually isn't hard and especially if you have the experience of doing one in dcu before you go away um that'll that'll um put you high up on the list as well yeah and just to remind people this is obviously a 30 minute chat but we're always on student help at dcu.ie um at any point today tomorrow next week next month next year uh, if you do have a question so don't worry if you, if you think of something in half an hour's time and you want to ask you can't come back to us um i want to ask you a little bit about and then i want to go on clubs and sides but a little bit about what you said there and the difference between say second level and third level and now that you're a few years into your experience maybe looking back is there anything that surprise you or you do differently or that was something you researched and kind of maybe it actually happened anything that you're looking back on now that for those that are listening you could maybe tell them a bit about that um yeah i'd say definitely looking into courses uh look at the modules you're going to study that's something i didn't look into very much at all um so i honestly really didn't have a clue about what kind of modules i'd be doing i was really nervous then when i went into first year i didn't realize i'd have to do accounting straight off the bat and i had never done accounting before and uh like i remember sitting in the exam and talking to people around me and saying like oh are you nervous for this exam they were like i did it for really even sort of be grand and i was there like oh god that's not what i wanted to hear but um no definitely research into your modules um as well as that like don't be afraid to reach out to people um like on platforms like we have unibody uh there's the instagram page like questions like we're more than happy to answer them at any time um what else uh i'd say i first year advice i would give myself from starting college would be to go to the library sooner i the library was a building that was so big it kind of daunted it was daunting to me and uh i didn't go until i think a few days before my first big assignment was due and i was like this place is this is a great crack it's like a hub for loads of people that are doing like similar things to you you know especially assignment season and whatnot you'll always meet people that'll be there to give you a hand like so definitely go to the library they have so many resources as well um sure i hadn't i hadn't written a paper or uh, done an assignment before going into university referencing all that kind of stuff like was so scary they have so many um things available to help you there like and i know they've moved online this year they have so many um different classes that they're doing with people teaching them how to reference um so if i had known about that sooner i'd say it would have been a, a lot hell of a lot easier than me trying to youtube videos on how to harvard reference the night before i had a, an assignment too so yeah i wanted to just mention as well because you mentioned um library and, and student hub and so on there is lots of facilities and we don't get time to talk about everything but lots of resources supports units the student help and support um, so student development and, and student support and development unit in DCU that give us um, give the students so, so much support. So if there is something going on, financially well-being, change in course, etc., there is lots of units um, that are there. And again, if people have questions, happy to take them um, and, and talk to you directly at length on that. I do want to definitely talk about outside the classroom because I guess, um, and I'm a former student at DCU, so I've seen it and been involved with it. But every time you talk to a student or an ambassador or anybody in DCU, society life getting involved, outside the classroom is such a massive 
part of what goes on, obviously inside the classroom, as you mentioned, is very important, getting a job and so on. What are you doing outside the classroom? And we only have a couple of minutes, so you're going to have to keep your experiences because I know you're doing loads inside the classroom. <laughs> what goes I on inside the classroom? Great. Yeah. Um, so in the first few weeks, I actually, um, I remember it was at the clubs and societies fair. So this is the big fair they have in the first few weeks of college, um, trying to get freshers involved in um, different societies. And I was walking past a stand and there was actually a girl from Donegal on the stand. And she was like, Laura Footy, I know you can sing. And I was like, oh God, here we go. I, um, I was like, maybe singing isn't what I want to do when I go to college. Maybe I should join tennis or something like that there. But she got me and she says, you have to sign up for this thing. I was like, what is this? Um, and she was like, it's called the Glee Society. And I was like, I've never watched the show or anything like that there. I was like, I don't know if I have an interest in this. She was like, no, she was like, it's kind of like a choir. I was like, okay. So I signed up and she was like, we have auditions next week. So you have to go to the audition and like sing a verse of the chorus of a song. I was like, right, right. Okay. Got home. And I remember telling my roommate about it. And she was like, that'd be so good. Like you'd really enjoy that. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Then 20 minutes then before the audition the following week, I was like, I really don't know if I want to do this. And then she was like, I'll just go for it. So I was like, grand I went and done the audition everything was fine I remember I went home that weekend and on the bus back up on the Sunday night I got an email and uh I was sitting beside my friend um who she was going to college in Dublin as well I was like oh I got into this glee society thing and I was like I don't know if like I don't know if it's me like I don't know if I want to do it like um and uh she was like oh sure go for it like it'd be grand I was like yeah I says I'll go for the first week and I might drop out of it then if I don't like it um my god I entered the first uh or we had rehearsals then because the whole thing is you get into a cast and then you go on and do a show in March so our first rehearsals then were in like October time and I went in and I was like I I, I just went in uh I could feel sense like that the people were so similar to me and just the crack like it was going to be great fun so um I knew from that moment on I was like this is going to be help me properly settle into college I found my people now and it was the best decision I made was joining that there I've got so much more than just singing with a group of people out of it um we started after my first year of uh doing it like we sold out the helix in our first show it was incredible I had all my family and friends up from Donegal to see it as well like it was such a great achievement and uh because we had worked so hard for it throughout the year and then last year um I became a member of the committee so I was the PRO which is the public relations officer I was in charge of running all the social media and um uh connecting with people who were uh messaging the page and um putting out the uh marketing I suppose as well um I got to use my skills from my course and uh mix them with something that was totally outside of what I uh I wouldn't nearly dream of relating something like that to business like a singing club but um I was able to use so many skills that I learned from uh doing like even computers uh we done IT skills in uh first year and we had a marketing course I was able to apply things I'd learned from that there and then um this year then obviously we went online uh, we had to totally innovate and try and um try and still keep people connected to the society and get people involved so we've been working hard over the last few weeks to um try and move everything uh, to a virtual level um what else have I done last year as well I done the mentorship program which is with DC, the DCU alumni office um they offer to second year undergrads I was paired up with a lady who worked in Accenture she was a technology consultant and I hadn't even heard of consultancy before and they paired me up with this woman I was like I don't know if this is a career I want to go into at all and it was great I got to interview her we went for meetings every few weeks and uh, she helped me fix up my CV um, helped me apply for internships for the summer um, it was a really really good experience and uh, I made connections through her then to people even that had done their Erasmus in Valencia before she had friends that knew all about over here so I was uh, able to branch out and meet, uh, meet so many other people as well so there's an absolute abundance of uh, activity and uh, opportunities surrounded by college life and just the main thing is that you have to put yourself out there I've met so many great people through societies like not even just Glee um there's so many people through the ambassadors as well that are so into society life and um it's a great it's a great great thing to be involved in definitely
Yeah, probably just um, not to put words in, probably just maybe expand your network and your experiences and your personal development. And it probably, mm -hmm. well, certainly in my experience anyway, it, it complements kind of the in classroom experience and the the teaching and the exposure you get on that side. And and to to what you were saying there, the massive network and mentoring and probably lots of other things that won't even get time to talk about today. But 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 needless to say, there's lots that goes on. There's only a couple of minutes left. So if you do have any last minute questions um, for Laura, just pop them in the q and I'd said it's anonymous. We can get them. Um, Laura can answer them directly here. And if not, I can follow up. Um, and before we go, we have to do our quick fire round because that's also <laughs> very, very important. Um, last one I want to touch on, and again, a couple of minutes left, but last one I want to touch on is ambassador. Being a student ambassador, you, you did touch on it there when you were giving your answer to the last question, but being a student ambassador, um, what goes on in that and what do you do? What, what's it all about? What, what don't we do at this stage? Like that, That's the real answer there. Um, oh, I had such an amazing year last year at working as a student ambassador. It was great to be um, I, I don't even know what what the job title really entails there's just there's that much you get to do um especially pre-covid anyways it was just great fun i was working at conferences in the national convention center um i was working in the helix sometimes pouring tea at uh, tidy towns and then obviously the highlight of the year really is when we'd get to do the open days and uh, meet people um that uh, are maybe interested in the course getting to talk to um prospective students and uh what was it? what else have we done now no it, it really is it, it's been one of the highlights of my university experience by far like even i'm sitting over here i was packing my bag i was like i better bring my uniform with me to stay <laughs> so um no it's been it's been absolutely brilliant um and like the main thing coming out of it for me definitely would have been the, would be the networking um something that i wouldn't have been good at at all before but uh having putting ourselves in situations where we'd be working with uh different faculties within the university and everything you make so many connections um and uh not even within the university like the friendships i've made within the student ambassadors as well uh have definitely like whatever about settling in first year when i went into second year then i had a whole new group of people that i got to get to know which was absolutely incredible he i guess the and it's probably not to overdo it in many ways well but there is and you mentioned Glee and, and there's 140 odd, I think it may be more coming to this year, but uh, different opportunities. So some people are obviously a different interest, be it sports or singing or dancing or whatever it might be. And needless to say, there is, there's often something for everybody. And if it's not there, whatever that interest may be, um, you know, you can just set it up yourself. So I probably can't, uh, as to your answer to the question, you probably can't uh, maybe overstate it, but at the same time, there's so much that goes on. Um, there's about a minute left. Is it? If there's any last minute questions, because I want to get our quick fire questions to Laura <laughs> to see how how much she can climb the leaderboard. I think who's in the lead? Sarah Moorhead from psychology, and I'm gonna lose someone now. Gary from P. I think maybe are on three out of three. Sarah, for oh, that someone out. So you're up against. Well, they're they're all true <laughs> or false. Well, actually, no, there's one that's not true or false. Um, so that's why we do our quick fire questions because we will be uh, finishing up now in about two minutes. Oh, there's a question that come in. Let me just see what it's all about. Um. For global, you might know this, but for global business, how long is the placement in both Ireland and abroad? Do you know? So since I began, I think it's changed. I'm pretty sure the second semester of your second year, you do um, from January to May. I'm, I think it's from January to May. So your whole second semester, you're in a work placement. I'm not sure. I'd say it's very similar when you go abroad. I know it went from six, a six week placement to the full semester, um, like just last year. So it's probably a, a semester abroad as well. That, thanks for that. And for that person that asked it, feel free to give me a shout, student help at dcu.e. I'd be more than happy to get you um, the best person or the best contact to, to get absolute clarity on that. But thank you for that question and thanks, Laura. So you have, I don't know if you watched it before, but you have uh, six different options and we're going to give you three questions. So as you're up first, you get to pick any three of the, the out of six, any three of the questions, and I'll put them to you to see how good okay. you are. What, what ones do you want today? What's the what's the options? Well, no, if you just pick any numbers, three three numbers. Three, oh, one, okay, okay, okay. Um, I go one one three five. Sure. One three five. Uh, they are all true or false. So we went a bit easy this week, and a truth be told, <laughs> I'm actually running out of really good questions because this is our fourth week. So, um, you do get a little bit of an easy way. The number one, um, true or false? The DCU virtual open days are taking place Friday the twentieth and Saturday the twenty first of November. True. 
true. Well done. <laughs> number three, that was pretty easy to be fair. Uh, number three, and you already mentioned this, so I hope you get it right, but you can, so true or false, you can chat directly to students online to ask them questions on what we have, what we call a unibody platform. True. Two out of two. If anybody, Gary or Sarah, watch them, they're <laughs> going to be raging because these questions are so easy. Um, and then lastly, you may have, man, you shouldn't make this. Um, DCU won Sports College of the Year 2020. True or false? True. True. Well done. Three out of three. Well done. Bigger sync so, up. <laughs> bigger sync up and a few other things, I do believe. Um, but yeah, we have, we're just a minute over half past. And I know that Kate is in the room as well. Um, if there is no last minute questions, um, just a massive thank you and stay safe. I hope you enjoy Valencia. Uh, very jealous of your sunshine. That you're having <laughs> thank your back. you very much. Um, good to talk to you as always. And hopefully we'll see you um, uh, physically in person really soon. Stay safe. You too, Johnny. Thanks very much. Thanks, Laura. No problem at all. Thanks enough. Just while we transition across to Kate, or before we transition across to Kate Goodman, who I see in the room here beside us as well, and um, we're going to talk about aviation management and pilot studies. Just a reminder that there is uh, many resources resources online. Uh, if you have other questions, you have other queries, we have videos, we have podcasts, we have blogs. Um, you can watch webinars on courses. You can sign up for a weekly newsletter, which gives you all the latest information. There's lots of information um, besides what we're doing today at dcu.ie forward slash CAO. Um, so just want to give it a couple of seconds before we transition across to Kate. Uh, Kate, I'm going to pull you into the room now. So just while I see Kate coming onto my screen, you're on mute. There Hello. you go. How are you keeping? I'm very good. How are you? I want to get to a few things, uh, including your blog that you put out today, which is getting a massive, um, which is getting massive traction. I'll tell people a little bit more about that in a second as well. Yeah. Uh, but firstly and foremost, um, how are you keeping and what's going on? Good, yeah. Um, I'm in final year now, so it's very intense, not going to lie. Um, but I'm actually kind of liking just being at home, having little distractions, probably getting the most work done I've ever got in my four years in the ECU. So yeah. We're we're definitely going to get into the tick of aviation management, what it involves. I see a big audience uh, tuning in as well. So lots of people will be obviously very interested in the course. You're very active outside the course as well. So definitely want to get into that and what, what that entails really. Maybe, um, and sorry, just before we maybe kick off, there's a Q&A function on our screen. If you have a question as we're talking, uh, feel free to pop it in there. It's anonymous. I can put it uh, to Kate or if it's for me, I, I can take it directly um, and we can get the questions as we go. So we'll try to keep this as informal and organic and um, informative as we can. Take us, if you don't mind, because I do want to mention your blog um, as well, but take us back to maybe the start and your journey into DCU and your kind of angle and perspective and where you came from there. Yeah, so I think maybe the first place to start was in TY. Um, so in TY, like most students, uh, we had to go on work placements. Um, so my dad, he works in Dublin airport. So I was just like hanging up, go to the airport. He can sort it out for me, it won't be too much hassle. Um, and that was grand. And then on my second day, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I wanna stay here forever. How can I do that? Um, and then I was actually in the airport fire station and one of the firefighters was telling me about a course called aviation management in DCU. And then I went home that night, looked it up on my laptop and I was like, yep, yeah, that's for me. And then ever since then, it was top of my CEO um, and it was my aim from then on. And then I got it. I got it. Yeah. We have a comment in, normally don't get comments this early in our conversation, but the president of the university, Derek Yo, has tuned in to say uh, that you're wonderful and everybody in DCU is wonderful. So there you go. <laughs> Dara is watching and keep an eye. <laughs> and Dara is always um, uh, very close in terms of his engagement with students. And I know um, lots of students, uh, you know, get to students union and even students like Kate um, often interact directly. So thank you, Dara, always appreciated. Um, so it was what you wanted to do, um, but maybe give us a sense, um, and it's not a loaded question, but maybe give us a sense of your journey into DCU and maybe yeah. what, you know, the angle that you took. So like I said, after looking up um, the course, it was my aim. So then, um, so for six year, my aim was 465 points because I knew in around that would be the amount of points I needed to get into the course. Um, so that was my aim. I studied really hard, not gonna lie, I studied really hard. Um, and then for my mocks, I got 419 and I was like, okay, that's good, on track, be grand. So I was just like, just have to keep working and I'll get it. And then day of 
results. I opened my papers and counted it up. I counted it up three times and I only went up one point. So I got 420 points. So, which is amazing. I'm really proud of it now, but at the time I was absolutely heartbroken because I knew it wouldn't be enough points to get into the course. Um, and like I cried all day, like shocking. <laughs> um, but then to, I think it's like five days later when you get the CEO offers. To be honest, I forgot that I applied to another scheme. I applied to the um, DARE scheme. So the DARE scheme is a disability access route to education. Um, so I could apply because I have dyslexia and dyspraxia. Um, you can also apply if you have um, physical disabilities, mental disabilities, and then obviously learning like myself. Um, but yeah, it was so simple and quick. Um, I just filled out the form with my garden center one afternoon when I should have been in Spanish or something. Um, and the day of CEO results, I opened my, I like looked at it online and I was like, I think I got it. And then obviously being dyslexic, I was like, am I reading it wrong? But no, I got it. And I started applying again. Um, but yeah, and then ever since then, just been so happy in this year. So le let's stay with that access route if we can for a moment. Mm -hmm. Then we'll get to talk about the actual course and what goes on. So you get the offer, you come in, Access, as I know, as a staff member and as a former student at DCU, uh, the wonderful work that they do inside of DCU, but maybe give us a sense of maybe the resources and the support that they would have given you and many other students um, all, all the time, really. Yeah, so as an Access student, we got to come in a week before every all the other students, and we kind of had an introduction to DCU, and we got to know other students through that route, um, we got our own tour, um, so I actually met my best friend from college on that day um, and then they also gave us the emails that we could contact them if we had any issues and on that day they set up appointments for us all so we could get the supports we needed. So I personally for the junior cert and leaving cert I typed all my exams, I had a waiver for spelling and grammar and um, I had someone reading out my paper and um, so I was like I want that all again. Um, so I went into the DCO office and I was like, I want this, this and this. And they were like, okay, fair enough. But they're like, when you're in Ryanair, will there be someone reading out your emails for you? And I was like, no. So they're like, so you need to work on that. I was like, yeah, fair enough. Um, so they just gave me a software, it's called Clara Reads. So it's really easy to use. You just highlight what you want um, and then it reads it to you. So it's been great. I don't need a reader, obviously, in my exams. It's just made me a, a more independent student and worker. So, yeah, I really appreciate what they did for me. Yeah, and Cathy McLaughlin and her team over there in DCU Access is part of the student support and development, the wider student support and development team, which do fantastic work. And obviously, you're, you're talking about the DARE scheme, but do fantastic work on, you know, transferring courses, financial, emotional, well-being. Um, and there's so many other resources there that if and when you do decide DCU is a place you want to go, you're supported holistically, so academically, and we'll talk about that now in a second, because people are tuning in maybe to hear about the Aviation Management Programme. Academically, you're absolutely supported in the world-class resources and teaching, but besides that, outside the classroom, no matter if you're a sporting student or a mature student or an access student, et cetera, there's many other resources there. So just bear that in mind for those that are listening. So we might then get into aviation management a little bit, um, just in terms of what's involved in the programme, maybe where you are and where your interest lies and what's ahead then for you um, and then I'm going to talk about outside the classroom because I know you're heavily involved as well but the program first. Um, so the first two years are kind of similar um, so like Laura was saying we have six modules basically subjects every week and um, four of them are business focused so like Laura said we'd be in the classes with Laura's um, year group so we have accounting, economics, marketing, um, business strategy, so operations, really interesting things. And then the uh, two other things would be aviation focus. So we'd have airport operations, so how an airport works, airline economics, so understanding why, to, why airlines make certain decisions, looking at mergers, uh, competition. Obviously there's a few flight theory for those who want to go on to become pilots. And personally, I don't want to become a pilot, but I think it was really good to have those um, modules introducing us to the theories behind flying. So we have an understanding, which is obviously clearly important in the aviation industry. Um, and then we're going to have leasing. 
um, modules. So I'm not sure if you know, but 50% of the world's aircrafts are actually registered in Ireland, which is an incredible figure. Um, they kind of like our tax um, in Ireland, but we're also, we have a really well, a really educated workforce in Ireland that are really knowledgeable in aviation coming and some of those people come from our course um so yeah that's a really interesting aspect of the industry as well work placement yeah so then in third year for the first semester you go on work placement and then second semester you're back on campus um for work placement i started i applied through the intro program like laura was saying um so the intro program is great so you kind of just submit your cv um to the intro department and they set up interviews with uh, jobs that you'd like to apply for. So obviously I applied for Ryanair, Aer Lingus and Dublin Airport, the key biggest ones. Um, and I got interviews for all three, but I went for my Ryanair one first and um, yeah, loved it. And I got offered the place. I was happy. It. It's the biggest airline in Europe. So I was happy with myself. And um, so I was there for nine months I got paid every month which is great and um, I also got uh, not free flights but like all I had to do was pay for the tax uh, which is great and then coming back from the nine I was in the flight ops department so that was kind of piloty things and then I was in safety and compliance which I really really loved and um, so like my four months in safety and compliance is what I think I want to go to into next year when I graduate so yeah I, I've talked to so many students, prospective students, people that are in DCU over the years. And just like Laura coming in from Valencia a few minutes ago and you were at Ryanair, um, I have my own experiences and thousands and hundreds of others um, around DCU. The practical exposure, I guess, and experience that, that kind of sets you up for success for the future is often paramount and key in terms of your journey. So you, you're in an aviation management course, which is um, taught out of our DCU business school on our Glasnevin campus, but we do have you know, likewise uh, an education campus and those teachers go out on placement and many other programs that, that take up that intra work placement, often paid as well, which is which is nice um, to get as well. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about the future. So you mentioned, and some people that are listening, or for those that are listening, may have an interest in kind of the pilot route or may have an interest in some other space. So you and what are you, maybe you're interested in, but what are the options coming out of the course? Yeah, so I've talked about the first three years of the course. And then for the final year, uh, you actually have three choices. So you could go out, if you're interested in becoming a pilot, you can apply to pilot schools. Um, they have to be EASA accredited, which is the European Association for Aviation. Um, most pilot schools are. Um, and once they're approved by EASA, then DCU approves them. Um, the only thing I would say is if, if you're going down that route, the fee for pilot school is around 100 grand um before COVID there was cadetships which is basically the airline sponsoring um students to go through um go through pilot school and they pay and they have mentorship programs it's kind of it's very competitive to get into those programs but they are um opportunities that you could apply for and um, then you could also the other option is you can apply to the IA um or other aviation authorities to get into their air traffic control um, programs that's a little bit harder because before you get accepted you have to um, pass an aptitude test it's very very hard but if you practice apparently there's lots of books and resources that if you practice enough you get used to it and um, i might mention for both air traffic control and piloting you need to pass a few medical tests so just keep that in mind. Um, and then the last and final option, which is what I'm doing, is staying in DCU for your final year and um, focusing on the business side of things, but also writing your big project. A look, not, it's, not, it's not a thesis, but kind of like a thesis um, on aviation and what you're focused on. We, we might, um, I, I definitely want to get into outside the classroom in terms of what you're doing. It's because that's, it is a massive part of, of DCU life in, in general. Um, but just a reminder, there is a Q&A function on your screen. If you have a question as we're talking, myself and Kate here today, um, just pop it in. It's anonymous. I can put it to Kate. Um, and as always, we're at studenthelp at dcu.ie if you think of something later on tomorrow, next week, next month or next year. Um, so the, the 
current situation for you is you're very busy. Give us a sense of what that busyness, so you're writing your project, but give us a sense of maybe hours at the moment and um, how much of that is kind of, I guess, independent learning. But what's, what's going on at the moment? So because of COVID, obviously everything's online. It's all through Zoom. So um, like I was saying, there's six modules a week. So four of them are live. So I have to click into the Zoom call and um, two of them, it's all pre-recorded. So like my email said, like my lecturer said in the email, he was like, you can listen to one every week or you can listen to them seven in a row, like a Netflix series, it's up to us. Um, I'm personally going one a week because I couldn't do seven in a row. Um, so yeah, it is intense because it is final year, but it is at the same time manageable. Um, and I'm, I used to be class rep, but now I'm the rep for the faculty. So in my experience, if we are getting overwhelmed with assignments and things, we just need to express that to our lecturers and our course heads and they kind of, as much as possible, um, try to make things as easier, easier for us. Give people a sense of that. So something's going on, you know, you want something, maybe you have some feedback or whatever it might be. So you're a class or were a class rep and now faculty rep. What does that exactly mean? And maybe then try to give us a sense of some of the skills and some of the personal development that you personally um, have, have gotten from that, those opportunities. Yeah. So as class rep, you, your main role is if an assignment doesn't make sense or a PowerPoint hasn't been put up or mostly it's asking for uh, extensions and deadlines for assignments. It's just to email, email the lecture, express the concerns and kind of negotiate um, what ways around things. Um, and I think maybe the skills I've learned is negotiation and communication is also very important to learn how to write an email. I don't think I ever wrote an email before coming to college, but you have to be, there has to be a degree of, of being formal because um, it is staff members. Um, and then also as class rep, you go to a uh, class rep council. So every class rep goes and then issues um, school-wise are raised here and discussed and decisions are made there. So and um, we spoke to Laura last about being in the Glee Society and I think she was PRO in terms of the formal position that she had as well, being as well as being an active member. So you, you in terms of that role, class rep, you represent the class, you provide um, feedback, you express views, etc. That kind of links me into the kind of students union um, and the role that they play within the university. So again, lots of people might be as familiar with the wider DCU community. What does the students union do? What do they represent, you know, uh, events and so on? Give people a sense of that side of it. Yeah, so there's five people that are fully employed by the student union. So honestly, their main role is to make students time in DCU as fair, as enjoyable and um, honestly just make DCU better <laughs> and represent their points and um, represent students wants and needs um, at a bit of a higher standard. So they've normally, well they did this year as well, but um, for first years they have loads of events for making friends. I know my first week I went to something about like, I watched High School Musical in a room of like 100 students um, <laughs> in like the student union hub. Um, so yeah, it's really great, yeah. And they um, are represented across all of our campuses as well, um, academic campuses, just to note that, and the staff, full-time staff, as Kate said, fully, um, are employed fully by the university to represent um, and to help our students with any challenges, difficulties, et cetera. So we talked a little bit around, I have a question coming in, so I'm gonna look at that as we as we go. Um, so, so, well, a question here, uh, Kate, are accounting modules hard if you haven't done it as a subject for the Leaving Cert? Yeah, so actually, it's a aviation management is a business um, degree. Like you said, it's taught out of the business school. But for my leaving cert, I didn't do business, I didn't do accounting, I didn't do economics. And I was like, oh my god, what have I signed up for? Um, but so going into my first accounting lecture, I was like, oh god. Um, but the lecture was like, I know there's people in this class who have never done accounting before. I know that, so I'm going to start at the very basics. And he was like, we'll work our way up from there. Um, it is at a higher pace than it would be in secondary school. Um, but you get used to it. Like, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, and there's so many resources. I know for accounting for me, I loved the, my lecture put up YouTube videos. So I just watched them on repeat. Um, 
it is hard it is child it, it is daunting when you first see all the numbers I personally I did our new level maths it was scary but you you'll get your don't like don't let the accounting put you off and just to mention as well and thanks for the question there's a couple of minutes left if you have any last minute questions please get them across they are anonymous um just to mention as well what, what kate's talking about there in terms of online lectures and her lecture put up we have what's called um, a loop system which is basically like an internal ecosystem where all the students at dco have access to a platform and inside that platform is where all the lecturers you can interact you can chat to other students you can chat directly to lecturers you can obviously email them as well and your classes and your your presentations and any tests and quizzes and all different things are located there so it's like a one-stop shop for all of, of your needs as and, and when you're a student um in dc so just to mention that so if i could maybe recap on these questions these um sessions are so short so we're kind of racing through things but maybe recap on your journey of where we're at in the conversation your journey into dcu and your opportunity through the dcu access service and the dare and he spoke um brilliantly around that you spoke a little bit around the course and what that involves and at the moment where you're sitting and the, the i guess final year and the projects and you spoke a little bit around outside of the classroom and um, class rep and, and so on what else goes on outside of the classroom? Because again, outside the classroom and the experience there is just as important in some ways in terms of the academic exposure. So what else? I mean, I know you're a student ambassador, you're doing lots of other things. What else goes on outside the classroom? Um, so I've been primarily involved with trader societies. Obviously, the first one has to be aviation. But if you study aviation, you're part of the aviation society, um, which is really good, actually. It's a great way to network. Um, there's loads of master students who are great to chat to. They offer loads of advice. Um, they have loads of uh, industry people coming in giving talks. And then there's trips. So when I was in first year, I went to Hamburg. It cost me 50 euro to go to Hamburg for three nights on accommodation on a trip to the Airbus Museum, which is great. Um, and then in second year, I got more involved with the Enterprise Society. So what I did for the Enterprise Society, it was a challenge. Um, so me and one of my friends, we raised 700 euro between us uh, for a charity aware is for suicide prevention. But our challenge was we had to get from Dublin to Budapest, but go to checkpoints across Europe along the way. But the like thing was we had no money. So uh, we started off in Dublin. We had to go in, into town to Tampa Bar. And I was like, our first challenge was to make we had options for challenges, but what we did was like, I got um, some tours. I was like, can you please do Irish dancing with me? Like in the middle of the street in Temple Bar. And they were like, fine. So then I taught them how to do their ones with trees. And then that released money for us to get a flight to London. And then in London, my friend, she did like, she put, we had to put it on our like Instagram, which is kind of embarrassing, but we put it on our Instagram doing like pretending we were news uh, broadcasters talking about Brexit. We have no clue about Brexit. Um, and then we went to Paris um, on the like train under the sea. Like we got on a bus from London, we ended up in Paris. And then we had to kiss someone under the Eiffel Tower, but like just in the cheek. And then we got money to go to Prague. In Prague, we went to Mask got 50 euro. Then we went to Vienna. Vienna, we were just there for like three hours and it was like two o'clock in the morning. It was minus seven degrees and we were, we were frozen. And then we finally got to be at a pest and we got our debit cards back, which was the most amazing thing ever. Um, but yeah, like when I went for my interview with Ryanair, yeah, they asked me about what I learned in DC, but they're like, how did you go to five countries in three days with no money? Um, Cause that's what, that's what's on my CV. That's what I can say that I did in DC. Um, so they are fascinated by that. Um, so maybe skills from that is just like survival. <laughs> and I, like, I, go on, sorry, I keep going. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that I to this day, I still think that's my best experience in DC. I, I've made so many friends um, that I've never have met just because they did the challenge as well. And just to mention as well, because our university president, Derek Hill, is still tuning in. So just to mention, <laughs> this was after... Kate had all of her um, assignments and everything was up to date oh, before yeah. she went traveling yeah. so just, just in case <laughs> but in, in all seriousness it does give you a sense and hopefully those that are listening and um, that's what I'm trying to do is touch on outside the classroom and the range of opportunities and it doesn't matter whether that's as Kate was doing traveling or maybe it's something involved in the local community or it's charity work or it's sports 
or dance or drama or the many other opportunities that are there. Um, academically, we spoke about it, and obviously that's incredibly important in terms of your career and, and your trajectory there. But outside the classroom, your personal development, your social network, your friends, the, and all of that support, I guess, when you leave DCU and the DCU alumni community, when you leave DCU, it's a lifelong relationship and a partnership, if you like, that you have with the university. And again, it's just a note and to highlight that. We have um, just a couple of minutes left. So just the last time I'll, there is a Q&A function. If you do have a question you want to ask Kate just before we go, uh, get it in now. I'll read it out anonymously. anonymously. Um, and then lastly, there is a student help at dcu.ie email. So we're not going anywhere, albeit we'll be finished this live conversation in a few minutes, but we're always here 24 seven to help any student, um, whatever that may be. Um, so if there is any last minute qu questions, get them in. So this is probably the most important part of the, um, the conversation as the, is the quick fire round and the questions at the end of the conversation, because I think um, the student ambassadors in particular get very uh, competitive Hopefully. around this. So very yes, sure. uh, and the questions aren't too bad. And I think you should get these three questions just to let you know, no pressure whatsoever, but Kate, our, um, Laura in the last one got three out of three. So mm -hmm. there is no pressure whatsoever, but uh, she picked one, three and five. So you are getting two, four and six. I think you'll get all these to be fair. There's two true and false ones. And then one is, um, one is a name of someone. So number two is uh, the DCU Virtual Open Day is taking place November 20th and 21st um, um, in a couple of weeks time. Provide the opportunity to talk to both students and staff members, true or false? True. True, very good, one out of one. Um, second question is DCU has students from over 122 different countries around the world, true or false? Correct. True. true two out of two we're on we're on the target for the three out of three i think you'll get this one because your um involvement in the socials are the sorry the su side of things the current dcus president the name of the current dcusu president is Virgo. for a second name just for absolute <laughs> this is so bad I'm, i had a meeting with him yesterday <laughs> But if you can edit this part out, I'll give you three out of three in it. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, that was three out of three. Uh, we're just running out of time. There is maybe a couple of seconds left. If you do have any last minute questions and just while we're waiting for anything before I say thank you to Kate, just a reminder that we are here every Wednesday live from four to five. Next week, uh, we have Kieran Butterly, who is a Mint student, our former Mint student here in DC, who's going to be talking about his, his current uh, st course study, which is an MSc in digital marketing. He's coming up next week at 4 p.m. And then we're also going to be talking to Orla Cullen, who's doing her master's in law. So next week's a little bit of a master's focus um, for, for next week only. So it really just leads me to say, as always, it's always a uh, uh, very enjoyable our conversations both uh, now virtually but also in person when we are on campus so thank you for your time Kate and um, we hopefully will speak to you in person stay safe um, and thanks Emil for your time and for your insights perfect bye no problem thank you Kate and thanks to everybody that joined us today just before I leave just a reminder that today's conversation sits in between many other resources and many other opportunities for you to find out much more about what DCU has to offer. So we have podcasts, we have course taster lectures, we have course overview videos, blogs, social media takeovers, three every week. As I said, these live conversations every Wednesday with current students, we have virtual campus tours, we have an online interactive prospectus, a newsletter and much more. And you'll find all of that at dcu.ie forward slash CAO. So we are just running out of time uh, thank you for everybody that joined us here today i do hope you you found some insights uh, talking to both laura earlier on and kate here today you got some insights as always before i leave we are on student help at dcu.ie i have been johnny cooper thanks for listening and we will speak to everybody really really soon